The scholars of Islam, may Allah have mercy upon them, have discussed why this surah was revealed and when it was revealed. Many of the ulama are of the opinion that this surah was revealed in Medina. Others are of the opinion that parts of it was revealed in Makkah. There are a number of narrations in the books of Tafsir and in the books of the Sunnah that say that the reason for the revelation of this surah was because of an incident that happened with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and what they did. And that is that it is reported that once, as you know, Ali radiallahu anhu was very poor. Fatima radiallahu anhu was also very poor. Rasulullah did not have much wealth at all to give his family. So Ali radiallahu was very poor. How did he used to live? Well, he used to carry things on his head. He used to take water out of the well and then from the well he would then ferry them from the market to people's homes. And then he would get some food at the end of the night. He would either get some barley or some raisins or some dates or some wheat. And he would take that back home to Fatima radiallahu and then she would then cook and try and make some meal out of it. Perhaps if there was some wheat that she would make bread out of it, etc. So it was reported once that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu came back and he had some wheat with him. And Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she made the wheat and she baked the wheat and she made three pieces of bread. One for her, one for him, and one for Hassan Hussein because they were small and so one of them, one piece was enough for two of them. However, as she was baking the bread and the bread was finished and they were all hungry, you know, the whole family was hungry, they hadn't eaten the whole day. And I don't know how many times we eat today, but at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, people only had one meal. They cooked three pieces of bread, but then what happened was, as she was going to serve the pieces of bread to the family, then three people came past. One of them was a yatim, an orphan, another one was a poor beggar and another one was a prisoner of war that had just been released by the Muslims. One of them came, he gave a piece, she, she, gave, she gave a piece of bread. Another one came, she gave a piece of bread until they had nothing left at all. And unfortunately, the whole family went to sleep hungry. So Allah was amazed at their behavior. So he revealed the surah called Surah Insan. Uh, many of the ulama say that this is da'if, that this is not an authentic narration. However, what is well known, what is understood is that from the words and the verses of this surah, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jannah in one of the greatest details that he has in any verses of the Qur'an. And what is unique about these descriptions of Jannah, as Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah says in his tafsir, he says, notice how Allah did not mention Hurul Ain in these descriptions of Jannah at all. He says, that is because these verses were revealed for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and Fatima was a very jealous woman. So Allah did not want to offend Fatima, Allahu Akbar. So my sisters in Islam, Allah will make you happy, amply happy in Jannah. And my brothers in Islam, Allah will make us happy too, alhamdulillah. Even though there is no mention of Hurul Eid here, it's there somewhere else in the Quran, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful to all creation, the specifically merciful to human beings. Has there ever come a time? Has there come upon insan? A moment of time. Lam yakun where he was nothing at all. No one knew who he was, what he would be, what sort of creation he would be. Absolutely. It is reported from the Mufassirin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wanted to create us, he created our surah, our image. And only Allah knows what He means by the image. And only after 40 years, after creating the surah, then He created insan. So Allah is referring to that moment of time when He had created our surah, our image, but people did not know who we were and the other creation did not know what sort of creation we would be. So has there not come a time upon insan when He was nothing that people could recognize? Inna khalaqna al-insana min nutfatin amshaj. Verily, we created human beings from nutfa, a clot of blood. Amshajin. Amshaj means something that is mixed with each other. That is the egg from the woman and the semen from the man. 
These are the two things when it is mixed together, amshajin meaning mixed together, that Allah subhanahu wa, subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from the clot. Nabatalihi. So we decided to test him. Faja'alnahu sami'an basira. And because of this, we made him sami'an, hearing, wa basira, and able to see. So, ya ikhwati, our eyesight and our hearing are our means of test. And that is why, ya ikhwati, you should see no evil, hear no evil. You should see only good and hear only good. If you cannot, then close your ears. And if you cannot, then lower your gaze. Protect your hearing and your eyesight. Inna hadaynahu sabila. So we guided him to the truth. How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the truth? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us intelligence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the tawfiq in the qalb, in the heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the risala and the message from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us. Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. So he is either one of two things. We guided him to the way and we gave him free choice. So he is imma shakir. He is thankful wa imma kafur. Or he is ungrateful and he is sinful and so he is a kafir. So ask yourself, what have you done to thank Allah? Have you fed people? Have you memorized the Quran? Have you said more salah? Have you done more da'wah? Have you asked people, invited them to Islam? What have you done to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Inna a'tadna lil kafirin. Verily, we have prepared for the disbelievers. Salasil. It's ropes. They are molten iron. Ropes. Wa aglal. Locks. These are the locks that are put on your hands and on your feet. Aglalan. Wa sa'ira. And jahannam. And the fire. But let's not talk about the disbelievers today. Today we want to talk about the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on directly now. And he talks about now Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Innal abrar. Verily those who are abrar. Yashrabun. They will drink. Min ka'sin. From glasses. Kana mizajuha kafura. Mixed into it will be kafur. Kafur. Man humul abrar. Bir is the highest level of ihsan. What is ihsan? Ihsan is you do an action thinking Allah is in front of you. And if you cannot think Allah is in front of you, then know that Allah sees you. But the highest level of ihsan is called bir. Which is not only do you feed people, for example, you know there's miskeen, but do miskeen as if he's your son. This is called bir. Authentic report. Listen to this one. Wallahi, this is amazing. A man came to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and said, Ya Umar, I looked after my, my parents for 10 years of my life. I fed them food and I looked after them and tended to them until they died. Do you think I have done for them what they have done for us? So Umar said, La, Abadan. He said, Why not? Why are you saying this, Ya Umar? Look at what Umar said. He said, Because when they looked after you, they made dua to Allah every day. Oh Allah, do not let my children leave my house. Oh Allah, don't let them grow up, don't let them leave. But you, when you looked after them, you prayed for that day, when will they die? When will it finish? When will you not have to ever look after them anymore? Ya Salah. You know when you look after your parents, you don't have the same level of ihsan and bir like they had. They hate the day you leave. They make dua, you never leave. How will we ever repay our parents? Inna al-abrara yashrabuna min ka'sin kana mizajuha kafura. Verily the abra will drink from glasses of wine and juices and drinks. In it, mixed into it will be the most amazing camphor. Aynan yashrahu biha ibadullahi. It will be a spring from which the slaves of Allah will drink. يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا Allah will cause it to bring forth, spring forth wherever He wills. What does it mean? Ibn Abbas anhu said in the tafsir, he said whenever a person wants to drink something, as soon as he feels like drinking straight away, from wherever he is, a spring will burst forth. يُوفُونَ بِالنَّذْرِ Why? Because they fulfill their oaths. The scholars of Islam, they said, in the three madhabs other than the Shafi'i madhab, another 
I swear by Allah, I will feed 500 people tomorrow. Because this is the nadr which if you break, then you have to expiate. What is the expiation breaking a nadr? Number one, you must free a slave. If you cannot free a slave, either feed 10 poor people or clothe 10 poor people. If you cannot do this, then fast three days consecutively. Yufuna bin nadri. They fulfill the oaths that they make with their mouth. Wayakhafuna yawman. And they fear a day. Kana sharruhu mustatira. Why do they fear this day? Because the sharruhu, the evil of that day, will be mustatira. It means that the evil of that day has become so widespread. The evil is in the faces of people, the evil is in the sky, the evil is on the earth. Evil is widespread. What are they referring to? The day of judgment. So never ever break your word. If you break your word, then you are not a human being. You're a worthless human being. And this is the major point for which the ulama said that it was revealed because of the action of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha. And they feed people food. Because of his love. So they feed people not out of anything but out of the love of Allah Azza Who do they feed? Miskeen. A poor person who has no food. Wayateem. An orphan who has no one to look after him. Wa asira. And a beggar. A miskeen is someone who does not have enough money for his upkeeping. Then comes yateem. In Islam, a yateem is someone who does not have a father but has a mother. Today, how many million orphans are there? I looked up the report. 165 million orphans worldwide. And the third person, Allah says, Asira. Asir. Who is an Asir? A prisoner of war. Why have we forgotten the prisoners? Why have we forgotten the thousands that are in prison in the Muslim countries? Why have we forgotten the prisoners here? Even if they deserved it. Is he not your brother in Islam? So let us not forget the prisoners and their families in this time as well. My brothers and sisters Islam, these are the three people that we must look after. Now let's come back to the first part of the verse. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ Has the time come to love Allah? The one who loves us more than our, our parents. يَقُولُ سُفْيَانَ الثَّوْرِي رَحْمَ الله. He says, on the day of judgment, I would rather have Allah judge me, not my parents. Because I know Allah loves me more than my parents. How have you proven your love to Allah? What have you done to prove your love to Allah? Why does Allah provide food for you when you sin? Why does Allah give you wealth and money and good health even when you're sinning? Because Allah loves us. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ Miskinan wa yatiman wa asira. And they feed out of the love of Allah a miskin and a yatim and a prisoner of war. They say, meaning they don't say it loudly, they say it softly to their hearts. What do they say? So what do we think and what do they say? They say, Innama nutimukum li wajhillah. We feed you for the face of our Rahman so that we can look at Allah on the day of judgment. Because there is nothing better than looking at Allah Azza The greatest distress on the day of judgment for the disbelievers will, will be they will never be able to see our Rahman. Innama nutu'imukum li wajhillahi la nuridu minkum jaza'a wa la shukura. We do not ask you for anything. Jaza, a reward, nor a shukur, nor a thanks. Inna nakhafu min rabbina yawman abusan qamtarira. Verily, we're doing this because we fear Allah. Yawman abus. We fear a day which is abus. Abus is very severe. Qam tarira. So very severe and very terrible. فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ So Allah saved them from the evil of that day. وَلَّقَّاهُمْ نَضْرَةً وَسُرُورًا And instead of fear, Allah will put on their faces nadra, which is brightness and happiness, وَسُرُورًا and smiling. The scholars of Tafsir said, whilst for all the people who have disbelieved and they have been bad in this dunya, the standing will be 50,000 years. For the muttaqoon, 
they will not be made to stand. They will be given horses and riding beasts on the plains of the Day of Judgment. They will be given to drink when no one has shade. The muttaqoon will have shade. When for people it will feel like 50,000 years. For the muttaqoon it will feel like one evening only. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts talking about Jannah. Listen to the description of Jannah. Dear Ikhwati, the scholars of Islam said that it has authentically reported from the books of the Sunan, this Ummah will be the first of the people to enter Jannah. The number of people that will enter Jannah will be 120 rows, that's it. But 80 rows will be from this Ummah, Allahu Akbar. Our bodies will be made bigger and will be made into the images of Yusuf salam, the most amazing beauty. We will enter Jannah at the age of 33 years old. Allahu Akbar. وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا sabaru, And he rewarded them because of their patience. Remember what I said? The highest of sabr is to do good deeds, constancy in doing good deeds. So you don't feed people only once, you do it all the time. بِمَا sabaru, جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Jannah and all the harir which is silk is from Jannah but he has specialized the silk here. Why? Because it is so amazing. Muttaki'ina fiha ala al-ara'ik They'll be reclining upon beautiful couches. La yarawna fiha shamsa wa la zamharira They will not see the hot sun. So therefore if you don't have the sun, where will you get light from? The scholars of Islam, they said the light will be from the throne of Allah. Wa la zamharir Ooh, cold, extreme cold. And close by them will be the shade, which is of the trees in Jannah. And the, the, the shade will be so close, it will give them perfect shade from the light of the throne. Even though the light of the throne is not hot. But still, a little bit of shade because you are the king in your throne. وَيُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِآنِيَةٍ And they will run around them بِآنِيَةٍ Servants, we will have servants who will be running around بِآنِيَةٍ With all these utensils and these vessels مِنْ فِضَّةٍ From silver وَأَكْوَابٍ كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرًا Meaning, cups كَانَتْ قَوَارِيرًا They are made of crystal What is this crystal? Allah says, look at the next verse قَوَارِيرًا مِنْ فِضَّةٍ this is crystal not made of silica. This is crystal made of silver. How can you get crystal made of silver? It's un unimaginable. But Allah is describing that the silver will be beaten out into crystal so perfect that you'll be able to see the other side from the inside because this is crystal made of silver, not made out of silica. He has perfected it and proportioned it in absolute perfection. وَيُسْقَوْنَ فِيهَا كَأْسًا كَانَ مِزَاجُهَا زَنْجَبِيلًا And they will be given to drink from cups in which will be mixed ginger. So imagine drinking it, you get that hint of ginger at the end. Allahu Akbar. عَيْنًا فِيهَا تُسَمَّى سَلْسَبِيلًا It will be a spring in Jannah that is called Salsabil because of its tasalsul, because it keeps on coming. More drink after drink after drink after drink as much as you want. So you will not drink in Jannah out of thirst. You will drink out of pure pleasure. وَيَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ And they will run around them, do tawaf around them. Who? Who will look after their needs? وِلْدَانُ مخلدون. Meaning they'll be forever young. And these are our servants in Jannah that are waiting for us. إِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ حَسِبْتَهُمْ لُؤْلُؤًا مَنْثُورًا if you just saw them, you'd think them they're lu'lu and manthura. They're so beautiful, they're like pearls. Ya akhwati, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given two creatures the description of lu'lu. The first is the servants, which means scattered pearls. Whereas the hurul ayn have also been called lu'lu in other verses in the Quran. I have to talk about hurulina, I can't, ya akhi. They are called lu'lu maknuna, meaning concealed pearls. So why does Allah call the hurul ayn concealed pearls? but called the servants scattered pearls. Yaqul ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he says in his tafsir, he said, because the servants are busy working for you. So they're all scattered around, meaning they're running around doing all the things that you need. But the, but the hurul ayn are called lu'lu and makluna, they're called concealed pearls because 
they are not made for work. They're made for your pleasure only. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ And when you were to see, ثُمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And if in all this pleasure you're looking, and you're residing, and you're reclining, and you're just able to see, you'd see a mulkan kabira, you'd see a great dominion, a great kingdom is yours. How great? In the authentic hadith in Sunan Tirmidhi, يقول Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, huh? the last person, not the best one, or the middle one, last one, who enters Jannah, will stand on the gates of Jannah and see his kingdom in front of him for 2,000 years travel. And he will say, no one has been given what I have been given. Aliyahum thiyabu sundus. Upon them and on their bodies will be thiyab, will be clothes of sundus, heavy brocade. Aliyahum thiyabu sundus in khudru wa istabraq. Meaning green, with heavy brocade. Wahullun asawira min fiddha. And they will be given to wear beautiful ornaments from silver. وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا tahura, And their Lord will give them beautiful pure water and beautiful drink and beautiful juices on the day when they enter Jannah. إِنَّ هَذَا كَانَ لَكُمْ جَزَاءً وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا Verily, this is your reward. And for you is a thanks. وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ And your striving in this dunya is mashkura, is thanks by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna nahnu nazzalna alayka al-Qur'ana tanzila. Verily, we are the ones who have revealed the Qur'an to you, uh, descending from Allah. Fasbir li hukmi rabbika. So be patient for the command of your Lord. Wala tuti' minhum athiman aw kafura. And do not obey from them athiman, a sinful person, aw kafura, or a disbeliever. وَذْكُرِ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ And remember the name of your Lord. بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Meaning, make dhikr of Allah in the morning, وَأَصِيلًا And in the evening. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ And at night, prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, pray your tahajjud prayer. Do not leave it. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ Even if it be two rak'ahs, ya akhwati, do not leave it. Every night, two rak'ahs, after Isha. If you cannot pray the last part of the night, then pray the first part of the night. But do not forget your tahajjud salah every night. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَاسْجُدْ لَهُ And from the night, prostrate to him. وَسَبِّحْهُ لَيْلًا طَوِيلًا And praise him a long duration of the night. Meaning, whilst you're lying down on your bed, and you're trying to go to sleep, remember Allah, subhanAllah, 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 and praise Allah for a very long duration of the night. إِنَّ هَؤُلَىٰ Verily those people, Meaning the disbelievers. يُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ They love to be in a hurry. وَيَذَرُونَ وَرَاءَهُمْ And they leave behind them. يَوْمًا ثَقِيلًا A very heavy day. نَحْنُ خَلَقْنَاهُمْ وَشَدَدْنَا أَسْرَهُمْ We are the ones who created them. وَشَدَدْنَا And we strengthened their, their structure. We are the ones who gave them strength. We gave them strength in their bodies. وَإِذَا شِئْنَا And if we want... بَدَّلْنَا أَمْثَالَهُمْ تَبْدِيلًا And we will change the example of them from their strength into one of weakness, from their young to old, from their health to one of sickness. We will change them. إِنَّ هَذِهِ تَذْكِرَ This is nothing but a reminder. فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ سَبِيلًا So whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah said, let, let him take a path, not the path. Because your ikhwati, this is very important. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given us only one way to worship Him or one way to excel in our worship of Him. He has given us the way of Umar, radiallahu anhu. He has given us the way of Abu Bakr. He has given us the way of multiple ways. Jannah does not have only one gate, it has eight gates. So you don't, if you cannot excel in fasting, perhaps you can excel in salah. If you cannot excel in salah, perhaps you can excel in da'wah. If you cannot excel in da'wah, perhaps you can excel in tahajjud. If you can't excel in one ibadah, you can excel in the other. So whoever wills, let him take a path to Allah. So figure out what is, what is the one that Allah has desired for you. What is the one through which you will enter Jannah, insha'Allah. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَيَّا شَاءَ And you cannot will except if Allah wills. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا 
Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowledgeable and most wise. يُدْخِلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ فِي رَحْمَتِهِ He enters whoever he wills into his mercy. وَالظَّالِمِينَ أَعَدَّ لَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And the wrongdoers, Allah has prepared for them a very severe trial.